Welcome traders to another Tickmill Weekly Market Outlook for week commencing the 13th of February with me, Patrick Munley. In the US this week, uh, it's going to be uh, an interesting data slate with US inflation, retail sales and pro industrial production all released. First thing to think about is that the January activity data is going to be strong throughout. The contrast between the weather in mid to late December when it was incredibly cold in the States versus a very mild January couldn't be more stark. This means there will be delayed consumption, plus better weather means more people out and about, which in all likelihood will lift January spending. Markets already know how auto sales were very strong and that will ultimately lift retail sales uh, on its own. The shock January employment jump also implies robust demand. Manufacturing, mining and construction may also look better given warmer temperatures making it easier to do work and will lift output in general. We wouldn't really class this as a start of a new uptrend, though. Uh, more noise is what is generally a softening trend, given business confidence is on par with where we were during the global financial crisis all those years ago. Note too, February has experienced a return to colder temperatures, which could lead the correction back to more normal patterns. Nonetheless, with the Fed minded to keep hiking to ensure inflation comes down, it makes the likelihood of a May rate hike in addition to a March hike more plausible. Inflation could also boost the cause for a May rate hike. Rising energy costs through January will lift the headline rate, but used car prices will boost the core too. The jump in auto sales saw dealers raise their profit margins, with car auction prices jumping 2.5% according to the Manaheim data. Given the high weighting of used vehicles with the basket of goods and services used to calculate CPI, this could add a 0.15 percentage point to the month-over-month -month rate on its its own. Shelter, which accounts for a third of the overall inflation basket, is also likely to remain firm given the time house prices and then the new rental agreements take to show up in the data. A 0.4% month-over-month core print uh, would give the Fed near-term ammunition to argue for a May raise hike. Nonetheless, Markets think that these two components, shelter and cars, will contribute to inflation slowing sharply from mid to second quarter, with weakening corporate pricing power also contributing to getting inflation down to 2% by the year end. So let's take a look at the dollar index from a technical perspective. Last week, we were looking for a corrective move versus that initial advance off the lows. We got that. We held the 102.50. As anticipated, we are now trading higher and testing this pivotal trend line resistance. If we can start to get a few uh, H four closes back through the 10380s then the next upside objective is going to be monthly and weekly projected range resistance 10480s and then on to the prior swing highs at 10550 at this stage it would really take a loss of the high volume node and support down into the 10120s to suggest like i say a the potential for a false upside break and a resumption of the downtrend moving to the eurozone pretty quiet uh, data slate there this week. Uh, Tuesday, we get Q4 GDP, narrowly avoiding a decline. More color with the second estimate will be received. We're looking for 0.1% print there. And then heading into Wednesday, December, industrial production, looking for a negative 1.2% supported by easing supply issues, but the outlook does remain gloomy. And that wraps up the data in terms of the Eurozone this week. From a technical perspective, uh, Euro dollar, obviously the inverse pattern to the dollar index. We traded into our 108 target zone since in decent sell off here. So I'm looking for a fifth wave extension now down to take us into the 10620s below there. Monthly projected range support 10580s. At this stage, it's really going to take a move back through weekly projected range resistance at the 108 handle uh, to suggest a resumption of the nascent uptrend. Moving to the UK. Uh, the Bank of England has entertained the possibility that February's 50 basis point rate hike might have been the last. In practice, though, markets sense that we should get one more 25 basis point hike in March, though next, the, the, the next data inputs from this week are going to be key. Uh, the words here... I think that's going to be the main focus is inflation persistence, which is what the BOE officials have said they are monitoring. Uh, 
So here's what's coming this week. We get jobs and wages data. Wage growth has shown little to no sign of easing, at least in the official numbers. Quarter on quarter annualized changes in weekly regular pay have been eclipsing 7% recently. So markets will be looking for any signs that that is slowing. The latest Bank of England decision maker survey, which we know officials pay close attention to, has hinted wage growth might have peaked. We then get inflation. Headline CPI, uh, CPI sorry, should edge lower on a near negative 4% fall in petrol and diesel prices in January. Core inflation should ease too, though less dramatically. We're seeing goods, uh, core goods inflation come off quite rapidly as demand fades and supply chains improve. Effectively, a mirror image of what had helped drive inflation higher during the pandemic. But the BOE will be watching core services inflation most closely, given that it's less volatile and tends to experience more persistent trends than the goods category. Markets expect this measure to edge higher, though the recent fall in gas prices suggest the peak could be near. Energy prices have been a commonly cited reason among corporates for raising prices over recent months. And then rounding out the week, we get retail sales data. Real-term spending has fallen in 12 out of the last 14 months, and I don't think January was an exception. If so, it would point to a modest fall in GDP through the first quarter. From a technical perspective, uh, sterling traded up into our target zone just below 122, and we have since seen a reaction lower. I'm now looking for any move back through 120 to set up a move to test support at the 108, uh, sorry, 118.14s. Now, there is the potential here that obviously we could do a double correction and get another leg to the upside before seeing a move lower. So I'd be looking for any move back into the 122.50s. Uh, watch for bearish reversal patterns there to re-engage on the short side, giving us that move down into the 118.14s. At this stage, we really need to reclaim weekly projected range resistance above 123 to suggest an immediate resumption to the upside. Moving to Japan, obviously we have the announcement uh, potentially this evening of the new BOJ government, uh, governor, Ueda, who was expected to have a, a more restrictive policy stance. However, he did come out with comments suggesting that he doesn't have any immediate plans to make uh, changes to monetary policy. We also, uh, this evening in Japan, get Q4 GDP, uh, looking for a 0.5% print there versus a negative 0.2%. Solid rebound expected. Uh, exports and inflation are drags. We also get industrial production, final estimate, negative 0.1%. And then uh, running out the data in Japan on Thursday, December machinery orders, uh, clear downside risk to CapEx spending. So we're looking for a 2.8% print there. From a technical perspective, the dollar yen traded into our support zone, 129.80s to 129.50, and we're seeing a decent reaction higher now. So I'd be looking for any move that takes out resistance here at 132.90 to set us up for a test of weekly projected range resistance, 134.30s, and then onto those prior swing highs there, 134.70s. At this stage, it would take a loss of the high volume node here, 128.45, to suggest a resumption to the downtrend. And down under in Australia, the uh, consumer sentiment released on Tuesday, crushed by uh, price surge and rate rises. No letter in sight there for consumer sen sentiment, expecting a weak print there. And uh, then on Wednesday, we have the RBA Governor Lowe speaking uh, in front of a Senate committee on economics. Then on Thursday, we get employment data in Australia looking for a 20K print there. There's the potential that we could see something as low as 15,000 to the downside. The unemployment rate, 3.5%. Uh, and uh, expectations are becoming increasingly important with this employment data for the RBA. Um, illness remains a drag, but employment growth set to return. Flat participation should see unemployment, the unemployment rate hold firm, and that's what the RBA are going to be paying attention to. Then we round out the week on Friday where RBA Governor Lowe is speaking once again. This time he'll be testifying to a House of Representatives committee to round out the week down under. So from a technical perspective, Aussie dollar, whilst we hold this 68.80s, I can see the potential for another corrective leg to the upside, targeting a move into 70.60s, 70.40s. From there, I'm watching for bearish reversal patterns to engage on the short side. I'm ultimately looking for a test of this ascending trend line resistance coming in 67.70s. And rounding out the 
instrument check here. Let's take a look at Bitcoin. Bitcoin's rolling over a bit here. I'm looking for a move now down into the 21,200 area. Once again, watch for bullish reversal patterns there to redeploy long positions. Still looking for a break of these prior cycle highs, 24,250 to get ultimately a test of the yearly pivot coming in 26,800s. At this stage, only a close back through this ascending trend channel support, 20,100 area would suggest a deeper corrective pullback is underway. And that concludes the weekly market outlook for week commencing the 13th of February. As always, traders, plan the trade, trade the plan, and most importantly, manage your risk. Until next week, thanks very much.